I am a fraud and everyone knows it. That's exactly the thought that went through my mind when I started grad school. And there's a good chance that if you're watching this video, you've had that thought run through your mind too. Maybe you just received a promotion or got into a new relationship and then all of a sudden, the doubt creeps in and you realize that no matter how prepared you are, no matter how high your GPA is or how many compliments other people give you or how qualified you may be, it's all a lie. You're actually incompetent. You don't belong. You're just pretending and soon you will be found out. Sound familiar? Then you've likely been the victim of imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is a psychological phenomenon where a person is convinced that they're unqualified and don't deserve the success that they've achieved, even if there's plenty of evidence to the contrary. Instead, they believe that their achievements are the result of luck or good timing or just tricking other people into believing in their aptitude. In other words, people with imposter syndrome have a fear of being discovered by people around them for who they truly are, a fraud. Except they aren't. So let's bring this to life. Let's think about Spider-Man. Peter Parker has some pretty intense imposter syndrome. You know, even though he can climb walls, sling webs, Go web. get a six pack in a day, I'm fine. Sense his surroundings, and be recruited to the Avengers. Under Ruse! He still frequently doubts whether he belongs. I don't know if that's me happy. I'm not Iron Man. And he goes a little bit farther by trying to downplay his skills by saying that he's just a high school kid from Queens. And it's not gonna be me. I mean, I'm a 16 year old kid from Queens. It needs to be an adult with some experience and that's good like Tony Stark, like you. No, Peter, come on. Spidey feels unqualified or like a fake, even though he has a laundry list of good deeds and tons of skills to back him up. Yeah, I just, I really want to tell her, but it's kind of weird, you know? Hey, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. What's weird about that? And what if she's expecting someone like Tony Stark? I mean, imagine how disappointed she'd be when she sees me. But you know, I get it. Like I said, I felt this way before too. Like when I started grad school, or when I first became a supervisor, or when I first started counseling in Spanish, or when I tried to stop that train from going over the edge in New York City. <laughs> These were really strange new moments in my life, and I was personally stepping into uncharted territory. So even though I was capable, I felt unworthy, and I was afraid that someone would just walk up to me and say, hey, you don't belong here. But you know, it's not just me and Pete. If it can happen to Spider-Man, it can happen to anyone. This affects students, CEOs, and celebrities alike. So I have to admit that today, even 12 years after graduation, I'm still insecure about my own worthiness. I have to remind myself today, you are here for a reason. I felt like there had been some mistake, that I wasn't smart enough to be in this company, and that every time I opened my mouth, I would have to prove I wasn't just a dumb actress. I can't really believe I'm getting away with this, and at some point, someone's gonna tap me on the shoulder and go, come on, you've had your fun. Move on, there's some people who can actually do this. There's some proper actors in the world. There are no amount of good reviews that won't make you see the one bad one. Um, and the one bad one is the one that will somehow resonate with you. All the You'll be like, that's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth. All these people who say I'm great, they don't know. Right. Um, I was certain every day that he was going to call me and tell me he'd made a mistake, <laughs> you know? I suffered from acute imposter syndrome. Like how on earth did I pull one over him? So. How does this kind of stuff happen? How does imposter syndrome take control of your brain and make you afraid? Well, it seems like certain personality and environmental factors make you more prone to experiencing imposter syndrome. For example, if you grew up in a family that put a lot of emphasis on achievement, you may be more prone to imposter syndrome. This is particularly true if your parents seem to oscillate between being critical. No, this is where you zip it, all right? The adult is talking. What if somebody had died tonight? That's on you and lavishing you with praise. I was wrong about you. Give your real asset to the team. 
suddenly it seems like your parents' love is dependent on your performance. I'm so proud of you. And that may impact your own measure of your self-worth later in life. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. On the personality side, if you struggle with perfectionism or a fear of failure, or if you often undermine your own achievements, that might also make you more likely to experience imposter syndrome. And importantly, your identity can play a role in exacerbating these issues. For example, if you already feel different from your peers, whether that's due to race or sexual preference or gender or some other characteristic, that can add to the feeling of being a fraud. All of society sort of looks at kids of color or kids from uh, poor communities or rural communities as not belonging. Uh, you know, I, like many others, walked into that school with a stigma in my own head, and I had to work to overcome that question that I always ask myself, am I good enough? Am I good enough to have all of this? Am I good enough to be the first lady of the United States? And I think that many women, and definitely many young girls of all backgrounds, walk around with that question. A lot of early research focused on high-achieving women as it was thought that they were uh, experiencing imposter syndrome at higher numbers. However, over time, with more data, it seems that men and women experience imposter syndrome at about the same rates. Question for you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever dealt with imposter syndrome? Yes. Do you think most people deal with imposter syndrome? Yes. What does imposter syndrome feel like? Lately it's been just feeling like, oh, maybe I'm not a very good science writer after all, now that I'm doing science writing full time. Oh, so you feel imposter syndrome right now? Not really all the time, but occasionally when I'm at work, I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing and maybe I shouldn't be here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Imposter syndrome is essentially a fear. So it's not all that surprising that people with anxiety and, you know, social anxiety more specifically, seem to have a higher chance of experiencing imposter syndrome. Now that said, imposter syndrome is not a disorder, but if it gets bad enough, it can lead to some pretty serious problems. The most common issue being, Anxiety. Yeah, it's a little bit cyclical. But it makes sense because imposter syndrome is stressful, first off, but also it seems to happen more often when there are more external stressors. This may affect your work performance, your self-esteem, or even your health. And on the very extreme end, if it goes untreated, imposter syndrome can lead to depression. But there is a silver lining in all of this. First off, imposter syndrome seems to be situational. Typically, it pops up in response to changes like receiving an award or starting grad school or having an upcoming performance evaluation or being trapped under rubble and you can't get out. I'm stuck. I can't move. I can't. If you're nothing about this suit, then you shouldn't have it. Come on, Spider-Man! Come on, Spider-Man! So, to a certain degree, feeling this way means that you're exposing yourself to new experiences and that you're growing as a person. But also, imposter syndrome seems to impact high achievers the most. There's a good chance that the reason that you're feeling this way is because you are self-aware enough of the extent of your abilities that now you're doubting them. So if you've got imposter syndrome, it's likely that you're actually pretty accomplished and you're also pretty mindful of yourself. Okay, so we have imposter syndrome. Now what? How do we fight it? Well, I've got three easy steps for you. First, knowing is half the battle. Now that you have identified that feeling, you can recognize it. And when it comes up, do a reality check. Does what you feel line up with the facts? Now this can be a really difficult thing to do since we often equate feelings with the truth but keep working on it and you can actually build up and strengthen this skill. It's a really valuable one because you are the most likely person to convince yourself of your own abilities. Second, focus on the positives by acknowledging your expertise, identifying what you do well, and celebrating your accomplishments. Too often with imposter syndrome, we focus on our deficits and discount all the hard work and skills that got us there in the first place. But remember that you are deserving and that you got there for a reason. And third, reach out. Talk to someone who was in your position or, or maybe even talk to one of your mentors. They're likely to understand, they can normalize how you're feeling, and they might even have some reassuring words. Another option is to speak with a friend or a family member, 
or my personal favorite option, which is to uh, talk to a therapist. And I don't say that lightly. I think that therapy can be a really good option. You know, I've been lucky enough to have avoided persistent imposter syndrome. And for me, it's mostly come and gone. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. And I attribute that in large part to the people that I've surrounded myself with, who believe in me and in my abilities and in what I do. And I think that I've absorbed that confidence that they just seem to radiate. You know, I, I don't doubt that I may feel imposter syndrome again at some point in the future. But for right now, I feel confident in who I am and in what I'm doing. And I think that all of us can feel that way too. You don't have to feel like an imposter. You don't have to feel like a fraud. And we can do that either by fighting our fears or by finding an alien symbiote. Yeah.